I'm Shota Nishijima. Uh, I came from the University of Tokyo, Japan. Um, this summer, Japan is very hot, so I'm, I'm very happy to be able to escape from Japan. So Sweden is very, very cool. Cold, cold, sometimes cold. Uh, today's talk is about the uh, er eradication project uh, of the of, of the invasive mongoose uh, kind of mammal. Uh, this study investigated uh, how the eradication project pro project restores the native species and how to evaluate the recovery of native species. Uh, they are co-author of this study. Uh, Dr. Tadashi Miyashita is a professor of, the, my, of my laboratory. And uh, Dr. Yuya Watari is a uh, gra graduate, graduate and when graduate of this laboratory uh, while he belonged um, to this laboratory, uh, he started uh, monitoring program of native species. And after he graduated uh, in 2008, uh, Miss Marina Fukasawa and I uh, took over his work, and took over his work. Um, such hand handover of the monitoring program is a important, one of the important point for continuing long-term monitoring. Uh, okay, uh, let, let, let me self, let me introduce myself. Uh, I'm a PhD student and my main work is mathematical and stati statistical analysis of biotic interaction between native and uh, invasive species. Sometimes mm, I focus on multiple invasive species because mm, in Japan there are many invasive species. Uh, my main study species are invasive um, American crayfish. And the crayfish was introduced to Japan as food for edible frog, um, but not human. So uh, the many Jap the Japanese people rarely eat the crayfish, although it is very delicious. Okay, uh, invasive species management uh, about uh, management, management action of invasive species change with time since their introductions. Uh, in general, uh, ecological or economic impact and management cost uh, increase with time since introductions. And early detection by monitoring, um, which is uh, probably central te topic is of this, uh, this workshop, is an uh, effective management option when prevention, pre prevention fails. Uh, but uh, detecting early invasive species is, is sometimes difficult and often fails. And moreover, there are currently many invaders that have already established in uh, embedded ecosystems. Uh, eradication is a powerful um, option for the management of invasive species that have already established. Uh, the number of eradication program uh, uh, increasingly, but uh, about uh, the half of eradication program fa fa fails. Uh, but importantly, uh, the success or failure of eradication programs has determined by mainly uh, the absence or presence of invasive species. Uh, that is, uh, if um, environmental manager confirmed, confirmed zero abundance of invasive species, uh, the eradication program uh, is regarded as successful, but other, otherwise unsuccessful. So, but uh, it, may, it seems a little strange. Uh, in my opinion, Achievement of eradication program should be evaluated by the recovery level of native species or ecosystems. Uh, this is the uh, most important message in my talk. Uh, 
why should the recovery of native species or ecosystem be assessed? Uh, I have at least two reasons. Uh, first, in order to obtain continuous social and finan financial support. Uh, the second is to detect unwanted ecosystem consequences of eradication project. Okay. Uh, at the next slide, uh, I showed explanation of, of this point. Uh, to make the invasive species management successful, um, considering, not, considering not only ecosystems, but uh, social system uh, is crucial. Uh, Larson, Larson and the co-author co developed a framework for sustainable invasive species management. Uh, this framework argued the importance of uh, environment and social and economic agent, uh, of, uh, the, the feedback of environment, social, economic agent uh, for obtaining social support and financial support, providing visible, visible evidence of ecosystem recovery is in, important. So, but, uh, most eradication, most, most of eradication programs required a long, long time because uh, reducing the abundance of invasive species from low level to zero uh, is quite difficult, quite difficult. So in, during this period, uh, if focusing only on invasive species, obtaining social and financial support may be difficult while invasive species Invasive species density is low, and the number of invasive species individual captured or killed is also low. Mm. However, if evaluating native species recovery, uh, obtaining, obtaining social and financial support becomes relatively easier in, during this period. The second reason for, for evaluating native species recovery is uh, uh, evaluating native species recovery can detect unwanted consequences. Uh, removal of eradication pro removal of invasive species sometimes fail to increase native species due to increase in another alien species. For example, uh, on Mac Mac Macquarie Island uh, near, the, near Australia, uh, eradicating rat increased um, alien rabbit abundance. So this disrupted the native vegetation as follows. Uh, uh, that is um, top down, top down trophic cascade was triggered by removal of introduced cats. Another example come from Little Barrier Island and uh, New Zealand <coughs> Island. Uh, this case is a cat removal. In, in cat removal was conducted to protect uh, seabird populations, but uh, cat removal increased increased the abundance of alien rats. Alien rats. Uh, this increase. This increase. Uh, result resulted in the decreased breeding success rate of a seabird population. So removal of alien species have a negative effect on native species. Uh, similar similar process also occurred in Japan, in Japanese farm ponds. Uh, Japanese farm ponds are known to be a bi be biodiversity hotspot having many aquatic insects and aquatic plants. Uh, but now there are many invasive species. Uh, the, my laborat our laboratory member uh, conducted a removal of, removal of experiment. Uh, invasive predatory fish are large mouse bass 
in tourists from America. Uh, removal of, of these predatory fishes uh, increased the crayfish abundance, but um, decre uh, and, uh, and decreased the decreased, uh, danger, dan danger fly. Probab this is probably due to the destruction of vegetation by crayfish and the direct predation by crayfish. So, uh, such an unexpected ecosystem responses could be noticed if monitoring, if, uh, if monitoring native species or ecosystem is co conducted. So, an important question is. Uh, how should we measure native species recovery? Uh, this figure shows uh, temporal dynamics of the abundance of native species. Uh, since since inv invasion of introduced species, uh, the abundance of native species probably decreased and con uh, after control start um, gradually in increase, but, but uh, ideal, ideal comparison is um, between before invasion level and the current level. So, but um, in many cases, in most cases, prior information before area invasion is unknown, so unavailable. Therefore, uh, previous some some of previous study studies compared compared the current sta current status of the target system and uh, with an embedded reference reference cited reference cited. But if the target species is uni unique, um, such as uh, Ireland, in having uh, many endemic species. Uh, the such such an uh, embedded reference sites are unavailable, so cannot compare. Cons consequently, only comparison before and after control is feasible. But the achievement level can the achievement level cannot be assessed uh, assessed because there is no. No benchmarks. No, no benchmarks. This may be insufficient to obtain to continuous obtain uh, obtain continuous financial support. Then we came up with a novel idea of setting the benchmark of recovery. Um, this is a this idea is very uh, this idea is novel but uh, very simple based on the basic theory of population ecology and population dynamics. Uh, as invasive species density de decreased by eradication program, mm. native, native species density would gradually increase, but, uh, but the rate of this increase should dec decrease gradually due to resource or habitat, limi habitat limitation. So eventually, native prey density then reach a plateau, plateau of growth. That is carrying capacity. So we consider this this value of carrying capacity can be regarded as benchmark of native species recovery. And this slide show how to estimate carrying capacity and measure the recovery level of native species. So. Uh, important point is to examine native species density at uh, different sites over multiple times like this. Uh, and second, uh, using this, this monitoring data, uh, regressing population growth, regression population population growth rate of per site per site uh, by native sp species density, and which arrow, which arrows estimation of carrying capacity. And finally, uh, uh, 
uh, calculating the proportion of sites where native prey density has recovered at the level of estimated carrying capacity. In this, in this case, uh, site, B, site B and C has already recovered to the level of carrying capacity. So, so the achievement level is estimated to be uh, 50% in this case. Okay, the objective, objective of this study is to evaluate the achievement level of endangered species recovery by the eradication program of invasive mangus on Amami Oshima Island, Japan, uh, based on carrying capacity estimated from long term monitoring data. Uh, Amami Oshima is the second largest island in Nansei Island. Uh, Nansei Island is a south located at um, southwest, southwest to the Japan mainland. Uh, the Nansei Islands are ranked as one of the world's critical, uh, critical, critical or endangered terrestrial ecoregions by WWF. So very important biodiversity hotspot. And many endemic species in the Nansei Island lived in Amami Oshima Islands. And imp important, and importantly, uh, native species were free from free from mammalian carnivores until the invasion mongoose was introduced. In addition, mm. the high proportion high proportion of this island occupied by the forested area, about. 85% of the island. But, but there is a threat of deforestation in at the present, so providing scientific evidence that endangered species have a potential to recover in the forested area is important not only for continuing the eradication project of mangoes, but also for preventing deforestation. So, These are endemic animals in Amami Oshima Island. Uh, this is uh, Amami Amami rabbit, or in Japanese Amami no Kurosagi. Uh, this rabbit um, ha has a primitive and uni unique figure characterized by short ears and uh, short little little ears and short legs. Uh, this uh, because of primitive style, mm, this piece is called living living fossils. And this this piece is, is Amami J. Uh, Amami J. Uh, this bird ha this ha bird has a, a bright bright blue bright blue feathers. Uh, beautiful bright blue feathers and prefectural bird. This bird is very popular in Amami Oshima Island. And mm, this is Amami, Amami Ishikaze frog. Uh, this is regarded as most beautiful, most beautiful frog in Japan, in Japan, and living only in this island. And this species is was recognized as new species just two years ago, so. Uh, this newt, this, this newt also has a primitive figure characterized by what, what, in the, in the back. Okay. Uh, the mang mangoes introduced to Amami Oshima Island is a small Indian mangoes, small Indian mangoes. This, this species is one of the uh, 100 world's, world's worst invasive alien species uh, determined by IUCN. And this, this species is a typical carnivore, typical carnivore with medium sized, with medium sized. Uh, in 1979, 30 mangus individuals were introduced to Amami Oshima Island in order to 
control a poisonous snake uh, termed hub, uh, which had a threat, had a threat to human, to human life. But the ability to the ability of the mongoose to suppress the suppress the hub is equivocal, and uh, uh, this this uh, represents a uh, original release point. From 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 this point, uh, the mongoose expanded it expanded their distribution range. Uh, to investigate impact of introduced mangoes on native species, uh, one of the co -co one of the co uh, conducted uh, root sensors, root sensors along the Amami Central Forest Road, running the center of Amami Oshima Island, uh, because because because. Historic because invasion in, in invasion history because of invasion histories uh, along the along the this road along the this road there are, there is a gradient of there was there was a gradient of mangus density uh, near from near from the mangus release point mangus density was high but uh, far from the release point far from around here. Was be, was a uh, was relatively low. Uh, root sense in 2000, 2003 revealed the local ex, local extinction of six native species near the mangrove release point, uh, including um, all, all, all of these species are endemic to native species, uh, endemic to non, endemic to the Nanse Island. Nanse Island, so in, including Amami rabbit and including Amami Shikazu frog. Okay. And then Mangus Eradication Project by Ministry of the Environment, Japan began in 2000, 2000 year. Uh, uh, until uh, until 2020, uh, 2012, 2012, uh, very high cost, very expensive cost, had been paid to this eradication project. Uh, uh, this value is based on the current current rate of <laughs> Sweden corner. Uh, I think this is a very very high cost, high cost. As a result, a total of Twenty thousand mangoes individuals was captured by uh, trapping. Trapping uh, mangoes population size in two uh, thousand eleven was reduced to about uh, about three percent of th that in two thousand, which is a maximum peak density. So, but but um, complete eradication is not is not achieved. Uh, moreover, the number of mangoes individual captured was quite low in recent years. Uh, therefore, the cost of capturing a single ma single mangoes became quite high, quite high. So, the need to evaluate the need to evaluate the native species response and recovery is um, increasing. Okay, uh, based on this background. We address the three questions. First, do, do the decrease in mangoes density result in an increased abundance of native species? And second, do the populations of native species exhibit density dependent growth to the extent that their carrying capacity can be estimated? Um, lastly, how has the money mangoes eradication project succeeded when evaluated in terms of the recovery to estimated carrying capacity of native species. Okay. Uh, we selected four species, four species, all of which are in the endemic species to the Nansei Island. Uh, 
and all of the four species were decreased by mangrove predation uh, sh shown by the previous study. Uh, Amami um, rabbit, Amami tip, uh, one is a uh, Amami rabbit, and the, the three is a uh, frog, frog, Amami tipped nodes, Otton frog, Amami ishikaz frog. All of, the, all of the four species are red listed as endangered by the Ministry of the Environment, Japan. And these species are relatively easy to detect and observe. So uh, such a detectability or um, observation feasibility in addition to conservation value is an important point to for choosing, for choosing the monitoring species, I think. And all of the, all species are no, no, nocturnal, nocturnal. Uh, monitoring was conducted at the night time, night time driving sensors along the Omami Central Road. Uh, this, this picture, this picture is a typical scene of the Amami Central Forest Road at the daytime, at the daytime, and this is a car used uh, to find, to find, to find the native species well, and and not to kill, kill the native species by car. Uh, very, the car, uh, we, we moved the car very, very slow, very, very slowly, very, very, about 10, about 10 kilometer per hour. And two person, two person, a driver and observer took part in monitoring. And monitoring period was monitoring period was two thousand four times, uh, four years in two thousand eight, two thousand uh, three, two thousand six, two thousand nine, two thousand eleven, and uh, summer. Uh, all of all our summers, summers, all uh, summers, and per year, um, four replicate, four replicate, uh, in order to average, average the effects of uh, weather or environmental condition. Uh, until the beginning of eradication project, the monk density was high, especially close to the original monk release point. But in the last several several years the monk's density became quite low. X-axis uh, represents the distance from the, mon distance from the monk's release point. And Y-axis is the monk's density index, uh, which, is, uh, which is uh, estimated from trapping data, trapping data. And for statistical convenience, data, data were converted to the number of individuals observed per 1.5 kilometer. Uh, this size of site uh, was determined based on the home range of study species. Uh, their home range is uh, about one hectare. Okay, from next slide, I show the result, three, three results uh, with, with explanation from analysis. This figure, sh this figure shows the temporal patterns of endangered, endangered species. Uh, the numbers of all four endemic species observed significantly, significantly increased since the eradication project began. Uh, this, this is a detail in how detail in how to test density dependence and how to estimate the carrying capacity. Uh, the analysis is was based on logistic growth equation combined with mangus predation. This term is important because uh, if not including these terms, uh, the carrying the population growth rate and carrying capacity um, might underestimate it, might be underestimated. So what we want to know, 
in the carrying capacity, carrying capacity in the absence of mangoes. So this is the reason for including this term. In addition, uh, we considered environmental, local environmental factors that might affect local carrying capacity. Um, first, first is an uh, area of young forest, which may provide herbaceous plant food for the Amami rabbit. So we expected, we expect that young forest enhances the carrying capacity of the Amami rabbit. And the second environmental factor is topological wetness, wetness index, uh, which may represent suitable condition for frogs because frog, um, frog may favorite um, uh, um, water, wa water conditions, and, and we expected high TWI, high topological wetness index, enhances the carrying capacity of frogs. This is a result, mm -hmm. and x-axis is the observed number per survey, and y-axis is the population growth rate. And this, this gray shadow, gray shadow represents a uh, 95% of confidence interval of carrying capacity. So all of, all of, of four species exhibited density dependent growth and uh, carrying capacity of three species in upper panels appears to be very estimated because mm -hmm. the confidence interval, confidence interval was relatively narrow, narrow, small. Uh, but but uh, among Mishka's, for Amma Mishka's frog, the confidence interval uh, wide, wide, wider, is wider. Okay, last, last question. Last is a recovery level of indigenous species. This, this is a plotted, the, uh, uh, the carrying capacity of a, estimated of uh, Amami rabbit is plotted, plotted along the distance from the mangoes release point along the, this, this road. Uh, special variation in carrying capacity is due to uh, young forest. Uh, as, as we expected, young forest enhances the carrying, local carrying capacity. Uh, th this is observed number in uh, 2003. Uh, in 2003, ten, only 10% 10 of sites far from far from the release original mangus release point remained close to the esti estimated carrying capacity. Uh, but in 20 uh, sorry in 2011, 38% of sites has recovered to the level of carrying carrying capacity. But uh, there are still no individuals near the original release point on this area. So this is probably probably due to um, this, and this is probably because an um, insufficient amount of dispersal of the mummy rabbit from already recovered sites to this area. Uh, might retard, might retard recovery near the release point. Uh, this result is uh, for 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 two two frogs uh, that uh, in, in which in which the carrying capacity was so very estimated, but not unlike the Amami rabbit, no special variation in carrying capacity. So this is because. Um, T, uh, topological wet wetness index little affects the carrying capacity, so constant carrying capacity. Again, um, in 2003, no sites, no sites remained close to the level of the carrying capacity. Um, but in 2011, 38% uh, or 19%, 19% of the site of the sites have recovered to the level of carrying capacity. So 
the achievement level was was significantly in, increasing increasing for these three species but the density the densities are still low near the mangus release point this is the same problem to the amami rabbit okay uh, i will summarize the result and implications and this study provides strong evidence strong evidence of mangus impact on native organisms based on recovery following mangus management uh, Removal or removal ex experiment is a provide can provide a, a more stronger evidence of impact of invasive species um, than than special correlation or gut content analysis. So this is a one of the important point. And an important implication is uh, long term monitoring data makes it possible to estimate carrying capacity well enough to be used as benchmarks of recovery by invasive species management. And, nat and we found native species can recover to the level of carrying capacity even in the presence of mangoes. So this is And lastly, uh, monitoring of native species should be continued, especially to investigate with the uh, they will recover close to the mangus release site in the future. Uh, I think the dispersal ability, dispersal ability of these species are uh, key to key to the occurrence and the time time or timing um, of, reco of recover, recovery of recovery of in this this area. Okay, lastly. Uh, I explain, uh, I, ex I must say, general perspective and conclusion. Uh, people, people tend to misunderstand that the goal of eradication program is a uh, reduction of numbers of invasive species per se, but uh, the reduction of invasive species just means to restore native species or eco ecosystem rather than the goal. So. I feel there is a gap that must be filled in. And to uh, carrying capacity of native species estimated from long-term monitoring data can be useful as a measure of recovery of native species when prior information before alien invasion is unknown, uh, as we propose. And final message is uh, incorporating Monitoring programs to eradication program is important for obtaining continuous continuous social and financial support and thus making the project successful. Um, at least in Japan, monitoring program um, is rarely incorporated in the eradication project or invasive species management. So I, I think this is an important point and the important perspective in the future. Okay, thank you for your attention.